Amazing Adventures of Flash Gordon. Grove's emulsified nose drops bring to your radios the further interplanetary adventures of Flash Gordon. It is the same daring and resourceful Flash Gordon whose exploits have held you spellbound in the newspapers. Now through your loudspeaker every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at this same time, travel with Flash Gordon, Dale Arden, and Dr. Zarkoff to the lost continent of Atlantis on the ocean's floor. Failing in an attempt to escape from the land of Titans, when it is invaded by King Torok of the Iron Kingdom, Flash Gordon and Grego are sentenced to death in a pit of molten iron. The Empress Luana of the Titans so far has escaped capture, but Flash and Grego are led to the pit of molten iron forced to mount a scaffold, and placed in chains preparatory to being executed. What will be their fate? What possible escape is open now to Flash Gordon, Emperor of Atlantis, and his loyal friend, Commander Grego? In a moment, we will have the answers to these questions. Boys and girls, Flash Gordon wishes to acknowledge the hundreds of letters he's been receiving from his boy and girl friends. He's always pleased to get these letters and will answer them all. He is particularly pleased with a great number of children who have induced their mothers to let them try Grove's emulsified nose drops. Many mothers have written to him, too, to tell him how much more satisfactory they've found Grove's emulsified nose drops for grown-ups use as well as children's. If perchance you have not yet called these nose drops to the attention of your mother, you will do Flash Gordon a great favor if you do so at once. You can be sure you'll like Grove's emulsified nose drops. You can be sure, too, that Mother will appreciate their superiority. Suppose you speak of them to Mother tonight. Now back to Flash Gordon. Savagely lashing them with a barbed whip, a captain of King Torak's soldiers forces Flash and Grego onto the scaffold above the pit of molten iron. Onto the scaffold, dogs of Atlanteans! Onto the scaffold, they say! If I could get my hands free for one second, I'd toss you bodily down into that molten iron. Oh, you what? Well, it's no use, Flash. We've got to die. There's no possible escape now. Four soldiers! The chains! Quickly! Chain their legs! Their arms! Come on, look alive! Get on with it, will you? Let's get it over with. The armies of Atlantis will revenge us for this. I promise you. Silence there! I'll raise them into the air with a bullet. Swing them out over the bed of molten iron. Grego! Grego, what was that? I don't know, Flash. There it is again. Another explosion, Grego. Griff. The Flash. I see them now. I see them coming. Look, look up there. The rocket ships of Atlantis. They're swooping down upon the city. Bombing King Torak's armies with this hot grenade. Good. Good for them. Thank heaven they arrived in time. Here they come. Here they come. King Torak's armies are in panic. They're in disorderly retreat. They can't stand before those destructive grenades. No, thank Poseidon. Flash, we're saved. We're saved. Some of the rocket planes have landed now. Here come the soldiers of Atlantis to save us. And there's Dr. Zarkov. He's in command of the soldiers. Good old doctor. Dr. Zarkov. Dr. Zarkov. Up here on the scaffold. Yes, we see you, Flash. Keep your chin up. Your chains are biting into my flesh, Gregor. Can't stand it much longer. We'll be free in another moment. Here's Dr. Sarkar. Flash, are you all right? Are you safe? Safe enough. These chains are painful. They're grinding into my arms and legs. Well, we'll soon fix that. I have a dissolvo here. I'll cut them loose. There. That feels better. Now the ones for my legs. Right. Oh, thanks, Doctor. Now for Grego. By all means. Grego, old fellow. Yes. Now the ones on your legs. Uh, oh. I beside and that feels more comfortable. I needn't tell you, Dr. Zarkov, that you arrived in the nick of time. Yes, another few seconds, and they'd have swung us out over that pit of molten iron. Dropped us into it, and goodbye. Yes, I know. We rushed here as swiftly as we could. Dale brought you word of our predicament, I suppose. Uh, she gave us our first hint. She was across the Atlantean border before the fighting began, but she heard the cannon fire and knew that there was trouble. As soon as she reached Atlantis, she told us. I at once established contact with this place through the television equipment, saw that you were in desperate danger, and came here with a squadron of rocket planes. Well, you know the rest. Yes, you've driven the armies of King Torak from the city. 
Now we've got to find the Empress Luana and tell her her empire is saved. Wait. Here comes a soldier with a message. Your Imperial Majesty. Yes, soldier. What is it? We have the honor to report to your Imperial Majesty that the armies of King Torak have been driven from the city. You've done well. Convey my compliments and gratitude to your officers. Your Imperial Majesty. Was there something further? A small detachment of the enemy, commanded by King Torak himself, has barricaded itself in the left wing of the palace. We desire your Imperial Majesty's consent to drive them out with destructo bombs. Torak and some of his men have taken refuge in the left wing of the palace, eh? No, no. Tell your officers to withhold their destructo fire. But, Flash, you don't mean... I mean that you and I have a personal score to settle with King Torak. Soldier. Your Imperial Majesty. Instruct your officers to send ten men to the doors of the left wing of the palace. They'll bring with them the strongest battering ram they can find. Gregor, you and I will accompany them, and when the doors are battered down... We're going in there and bring King Torak out by the heels, dead or alive. Soldier, have the men ready in half an hour. Yes, Your Imperial. Come on! I'll take command now, Captain. Men, they brought up the battering ram, haven't they? Your place is quickly, men. Well, this is a mad scheme, Flash. You may get killed. And so may King Torah. Are you ready, men? Then listen, Grego. You and I will stand aside as they batter in the doors. If the doors crash inward, we'll leap into the front rank of the soldiers and go in fighting. But why permit us to wear nothing but swords? We could beat them so much more easily with dissolvo pistols or destructo grenades. I've got an incurable desire to meet King Torak man to man. His men are armed with nothing but swords. I want this to be a fight. I'm going to start the fireworks now. All ready, men? Shoulders to the battering ram now. Ready? Lift? Now, all together. Go! The door's giving. Once more now. This is the time. All together. Hit it hard! Go! Come on, Jago! Forward, men, into the palace. Charge for your emperor and for Atlantis! Here comes King Torok's men. They're trying to fight their way out. And there's Torok at their head. Keep away from him, soldier. That's my man. All right, defend yourself, Torok. Man to man now. We'll see who's the coward. Ha-ha! Come on! Come on! Why don't you charge me? Why don't you rush in on me? Ha-ha! All right! Let's get it over with! Oh. Lost your sword, have you? All right, I won't take advantage. Here goes mine also. Now, this is for what your soldiers did to Luana's empire. There. And here's just a little of the punishment you deserve. Uh, I guess this will teach him a lesson. Soldiers! Your Imperial Majesty. When King Torak regains consciousness, have him removed to one of Luana's copper mines. Put him in chains. Make him work and slave in that mine for the rest of his life. If he makes one move to escape, he's to be instantly killed. The command of your Emperor. Your Imperial Majesty's command shall be obeyed. Here, soldiers, help me with this man. Well, the rocket planes are waiting, Flash. They're ready for the return trip to Atlantis. Very well, Grego. I'll be ready in just a moment. Well, what are you doing? I'm writing some orders. One for the immediate reconstruction of the royal palace. And having that done, Grego, at the expense of Atlantis, as a friendly gesture to the Empress Luana. I think it's a wise move. Relations between the land of the Titans and Atlantis should be the friendliest from now on. Yes. The tribute to Atlantis has been cancelled. Friendly trade agreements have taken its place. The Atlantean army rescued the Empress Luana and drove Torak's men back to their kingdom. I think the gift of a new palace will be the final touch that will make the land of Titans our loyal ally, Gregor. Meanwhile, where will Luana hold court? There's no suitable place. King Torok's legions destroyed every building of any consequence in the Empire. I know that. I've invited Luana to return to Atlantis with us on a friendly visit. Her first visit there. To remain until her own palace is ready for her occupancy. An excellent idea. Where is Luana now? She's resting. Her servants are packing her belongings for the trip to Atlantis. The soldiers said they found her hiding in the stables where we left her. She was terrified at the bombing by the rocket plane. Yes. The poor creature thought it was some new and dreadful enemy. Well, these orders are all signed now. If you're ready, we'll hunt up Luana, board the rocket ships, and get back to Atlantis. And personally, I'll be very glad to get back there. And I. Frankly, I'd never expected to see home again. <laughs> well, I guess our troubles are over now. Come on, Gregor, let's get going. Well, we're nearly home now. There's the Royal Palace of Atlantis down there. Yes, it won't be longer than a few moments now. 
I wonder how Luana's enjoying the ride. I imagine she's enjoying it. She's in the one pounded by Lieutenant Ridner. Yes, that's the second rocket plane in the formation. Well, you can circle the field now, Dr. Zarkoff, and bring it down. Yes, we're back in Atlantis again. By the way, none too soon, either. They're beginning to make arrangements for the Feast of Poseidon. The Feast of Poseidon? Merciful Plato, I'd forgotten it. Feast of Poseidon? What's so strange about it, Gregor? My dear man, you look as if you'd seen a ghost. I... The priests of the temple will explain it to you, Flash. The Feast of Poseidon comes once every hundred years. Uh, Dr. Zarkov, you'd better bring the plane down now. Yes. Uh, hang on, I'm going to land. Well, Gregor, now that we're safely settled back in the palace again, what about this Feast of Poseidon? Why did mention of the feast give you such a terrible start? Flesh. I'm afraid it's another of the things about Atlantis you'll find very difficult to understand. And you're beginning to frighten me. What's so terrible about this particular celebration? I do not dare explain. The official information will be brought to you by the high priest. Well? The high priest of the Temple of Plato. Well, I'll soon find out what all the mystery's about, Gregor. You may admit him. Your Imperial Majesty. Your Holiness may enter. Thank you, my son. Blessings of Poseidon and Plato upon you, our Emperor, and upon you, Commander Gregor. Poseidon, go with you also. I have come before you, O Emperor of Atlantis, to remind you of your sacred duties at the time of the Feast of Poseidon, mighty god of the sea. The duties of Emperor are still strange to me, Holy One. I shall explain them to you. On the occasion of this feast, it is required by our religious laws that the Emperor of Atlantis give proof to his subjects that he holds the love of Poseidon in higher regard than friend or loved one or even life itself. Hold on here. You mean I've got to die as a sacrifice? No, no, my son. For it is easy to die. It is more difficult to command the death of a loved one. On the occasion of this feast, this is the law of Atlantis that our emperor demonstrate his love for Poseidon by sacrificing the one person he loves best in all the world. By killing that person with his own hand. Merciful heaven, but that's butchery. It is the law of Atlantis, Flash. And it means that you... You must kill either Dr. Zarkov, myself, or Dave Arden. Under the ancient law of Atlantis, Flash Gordon must kill the person he loves best. Dr. Zarkov, Grego, or Dale Arden. How can he decide such a tragic choice? You boys and girls won't object to Grove's emulsified nose drops... There's nothing unpleasant about them. They don't run out of your nose and make you messy. They don't run down the back of your throat and make you sickish. What's more, they don't burn or sting the inside of your nose. They quickly check a head cold and yet do it in a nice way. These nose drops are something brand new and a big improvement on old-fashioned oil drops. Mother is interested in getting results when you have a cold in the head, and she'll get results much faster with Grove's emulsified nose drops. In every section of the country, Grove's emulsified nose drops are selling at an amazing rate. That's because they are better in every way. Tell Mother to procure a bottle at the corner drugstore. Come with us every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at this same time for further interplanetary adventures with Flash Gordon. Adventures of Flash Gordon. Grove's emulsified nose drops bring to your radios the further interplanetary adventures of Flash Gordon. It is the same daring and resourceful Flash Gordon whose exploits have held you spellbound in the newspapers. Now, through your loudspeaker every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at this same time, travel with Flash Gordon, Dale Arden, and Dr. Zarkoff to the lost continent of Atlantis on the ocean's floor. Flash, Grego, and the Empress Luana have been rescued by Dr. Zarkov and the rocket plane squadron from the armies of King Torok and have been brought safely back to Atlantis. 
However, their joy of the rescue is turned quickly to sorrow when the priests of Atlantis inform Flash that the Empire is about to celebrate the feast of the god Poseidon and that in his position as emperor, he must sacrifice the one person he loves best. This means the death of either Dr. Zarkov, Grego, or Dale Arden. Which of Flash's friends must die? In a moment, we will have the answers to these questions. Here's what boys and girls are saying about Grove's emulsified nose drops. They're the best I've ever tried. They fix a head cold right up, and they don't sting the inside of my nose. Here's what mothers are saying about these nose drops. Grove's emulsified nose drops have certainly solved a great problem for us. These nose drops are not at all objectionable to children, so we can treat a head cold promptly and effectively. Everyone who tries these nose drops just raves about them. They find that they do the work better and do not have any objectionable features. Any child who has not yet called Grove's emulsified nose drops to the attention of his parents should do so at once. It is to every child's interest. Now back to Flash Gordon. The high priest has departed and Flash is left alone with Gregor. I know it's a terrible decision to make, but you must make it. You are Emperor of Atlantis. I'll tell you what my decision is going to be, Grego. I'll not go through with it. I tell you, I won't go through with it. I'm sorry, there's no way out. Oh, yes, there is. Call the Royal Council together tonight. I'm going to abdicate my throne and name you as Emperor in my place. Well, I cannot do that, Flash. You've got to remain on the throne, and you've got to go through with the sacrifice. Don't be absurd, Grego. Of course, I don't have to do it. Who's to stop me from abdicating? The law of Atlantis, Flash. The law states that if any emperor attempts to abdicate to avoid making the sacrifice of the person he loves best, that he shall be killed. All right. Let them kill me, then. Not only that, but all his friends shall die, too. So there's no chance of escape for the one who'd have died if the emperor had not been a coward. A coward? Do you call it cowardice to refuse to kill my best friend? To refuse means death for all your friends. For all of them? For you? For Dr. Zarkov? Yes, and many more. For Lieutenant Redner, the Empress Luana, and for Dale Arden. But, but how can I choose Grego? Which one shall I call to me and say, I'm sorry, but because you're my best friend, I must kill you. It's a dreadful test. A test no one but a man worthy of the name of Emperor could undergo. Your decision must be made tomorrow. It's all so strange, so savage and cruel. I know. Sometimes what is best is most cruel. Now, good night. I'll see you in the morning when the high priests visit you to learn of your decision. All right. I suppose there's absolutely no way out. None whatever. I'm sorry, Flash. Good night. Good night. My poor friend. Oh, Dr. Zarkov. Dr. Zarkov, wait a moment. Oh, hello, Vigo. I've just been with the Emperor. Uh, how's Flash feeling? Oh, very despondent. He's just been visited by the high priest. Uh, the priest told him of the sacrifice required for the feast of Poseidon? Yes, he was told. Poor lad. Who will Flash select for the sacrifice, do you think? There's no way of telling. It's a horrible decision to make. Yes, I know. Grego, let you and I make the decision for him. You and I? But how could we do that? Quite easily, I think. I think the final choice will lie between three persons. Between you, myself, and Dale Arden. Yes. Dale, of course, is a girl, and his affection for her is of a different quality. But the depth of his love for you and me, I am sure, is as deep as his love for her. I think you're right, Dr. Zarkov. What would you suggest? That we relieve Flash of the necessity for making a decision. That either you or I go forward and offer ourselves to him as the sacrifice. Doctor, that's an excellent plan. The right to make the offer is mine, of course. Uh, hold on there. I'm not so certain of that. I am an older man, Grego. My span of life is nearly done in any event. I claim the right to offer myself to our friend. Oh, there, you see what a dreadful decision it is. Even you and I cannot make it. I'd never consent to allowing you to offer yourself, and I don't think you'd permit me to do it. No, I would not, Grego. But the matter can be decided between us. I have a deck of cards in my room. We will cut the cards for it. Oh. Very well. We let the cards decide. Then come along to my rooms. I have the cards here in my desk. Here they are. I frequently amuse myself at night by playing solitaire. Mm -hmm. 
I've always observed that men with mathematical or scientific minds enjoy matching their wits against themselves in a game of solitaire. We're playing a more deadly game, Doctor. One in which the loser wins and the winner dies. Yes, it's a deadly game with death holding the stakes. We'll let the ace of spades be the fatal card, shall we? Very well. I'll shuffle the cards and you cut them. We'll place the deck face down on the table and start drawing. We will draw alternate cards until one of us draws the ace of spades. That's agreeable to me. Shuffle the cards. Here, you cut them. All right, we'll draw. Shall I draw first? I'd like that privilege. Very well. The ten of diamonds. Your draw. All right. The nine of hearts. Draw, Grego. Yes. The three of clubs. I, Poseidon. I've drawn it, Grego. I've drawn the ace of spades. It shall be my honor to offer up my life for my friend. Allow me to compliment you on your chivalry and your courage. I wish there were more men in Atlantis like you. Uh, thank you, Grego. Now, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to be alone. We'll see Flash in the morning and tell him what we've done. Yes, I'll go now. Thank you, Grego. Come in. Well, Flash, my boy. Good morning, Dr. Zarkov. Good morning, Grego. How did you sleep? <laughs> Not at all. As if I could. I don't imagine any of us slept very much. I know I didn't. Nor I, naturally. What do you mean, naturally? Tell him, Grego. Very well. We knew the horrible decision you were faced with. Are still faced with. Because you've not decided which of your friends must die, have you? No. I'm not a coward, as you both know. But somehow I haven't the courage to make that decision. We know how you feel, Flash, and we're deeply sorry. That is why we did it. That's why you did what? Dr. Zarkov and I decided to relieve you of the decision. By making it for you. By making... What do you mean? What are you talking about? Just this, Flash... We know that you would rather die than select a friend for the sacrifice. Yet we all know there is no escape, no alternative, no hope. Grego and I know that the choice would lie finally between Grego, myself, and Dale. I suppose you're right. Well, we left Dale out of it. She's a woman. She must live. Dr. Zarkov and I drew cards for the honor of making the sacrifice. And Dr. Zarkov won. Grego, do you mean that, that you're the one to die? I'm sorry to say No. The winner received the honor of making the sacrifice. It is Dr. Zarkov who must die. Doctor... Dr. Zarkov is... Is this true? Yes, uh, it's true. I... I don't know. I don't know what to say. What can I say? Dr. Zarkov, we've been through so much together. First on the planet Mongo, then in Atlantis. Well, there's no need for you to say anything, Flash. I... I understand all the things that will remain unsaid and... Believe me, I'm deeply grateful. It's been given to few men to enjoy the friendship of a man such as yourself. To die for that friendship is an honor. Yes? Miss Dale Arden is here to see your Imperial Majesty. Shall we tell her? She must know sometime. Let her come in. Yes, your Imperial Majesty. You may enter. Oh, Flash, I've heard about the sacrifice. And I'm so terribly sorry for you. Yes, it's a... It's a dreadful thing, Dale. Of course, there can be but one decision. Atlantis needs every man. You must allow me to be the sacrifice. Oh, no, Dale, no. We can't allow that. You've made your decision? Yes. Who is it to be? Dr. Zarkov. Oh, Dr. Zarkov? No. I shall consider it an honor, Dale. It comes to us all sometime. But Dr. Zarkov, not you. Oh, it's hideous, Dale. Savagely, barbarically wrong. But what can we do? Someone must be chosen or... Or all of my friends will be killed. Yes, Miss Harden. It's better this way, to sacrifice only one life. I suppose it is, isn't it? Well, Dr. Zarkov, I want to tell you that you're the finest, truest friend we've ever known. Thank you, Dale. What is it? A messenger from the temple to take your decision to the high priest. Tell him to wait a moment. Your Imperial Majesty. Bring me some paper. An ink and a quill. Oh, very well. Here you are. Thank you. To the high priest, to the temple of Plato, greeting. It is our imperial decision that for the sacrifice to the feast of Poseidon, man to die shall be my, my dear friend, Dr. Zarkov. Signed, Imperator Rex. Give this to the messenger, Grego, and tell him to deliver it. Very well. 
The priest will acknowledge this at once with a letter. The messenger's been gone for an hour. Why don't we receive an acknowledgement from the priests? Because after receiving your sealed decision, they'll pray to Poseidon to determine whether the person you've selected is the one dearest to your heart. Oh, I see. Yes, it would be easy to send the name of an enemy, wouldn't it? I never thought of that. Hmm. It's not your custom to consider deception, Flash. Oh. Just the same. We should have an acknowledgement soon. Yes, it shouldn't take much longer. That may be it. What's wanted? The messenger with the letter from the temple. Bring me the letter. Lord Imperial Majesty. Thank you. That's all. Lord Majesty. What does it say, Flash? Probably a verification of what amounts to Dr. Zarkov's death warrant. We'll see. What does it say, Flash? Read it to us. Yes, we're all anxious to know. All right. It says, Your Imperial Majesty, we have received your decision, and according to the customs of the temple, we have prayed to Poseidon for guidance. In his great wisdom, Poseidon has appeared to us in a vision, and this is his answer and ours. A mistake has been made. Dr. Zarkov must be spared from the sacrifice. The one to die must be the one most dearly beloved by you truly. And the person to be sacrificed is... Dale Arden. So the priest of Poseidon refused to accept the noble sacrifice of Dr. Zarkov and demanded instead the life of Dale Arden. Poor, lovely, loyal Dale. Must she die? Grove's emulsified nose drops will surprise you with the way they look and act. These nose drops are white and creamy. They don't look, taste, or smell like medicine, yet they are highly effective. That's because they are medically superior, because they stay up in the nose. Any child can understand that nose drops that stay up in the nose will do more good than nose drops that run right out. Impress this fact upon Mother, and she will undoubtedly let you try these new type nose drops when you have a head cold or stuffed head. All drugstores sell Grove's emulsified nose drops, and they're really more economical than the old-fashioned kind because you get more for your money and because you can use less. Ask Mother to get a bottle today. every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at this same time for further interplanetary adventures with Flash Gordon. <laughs>